patient. For questions 1 to 24, complete the notes with the information you hear. Now, look at the notes for extract 1. Extract 1, questions 1 to 12. You hear a doctor talking to a patient called Mr. Gwalather. For questions 1 to 12, complete the following notes with a word or short phrase. You now have 30 seconds to look at the notes. Hello, doctor. Good morning. Good morning. Can you tell me about your problem? Doctor, I have had a skin lesion for the past 12 months. When I approached a local clinic, I was told that it is a skin tag. Do you have any pain? No, doctor. Any bleeding from the lesion or any trauma? No, doctor. I would like to evaluate and have a treatment for this. Okay, uh, what's your age? 44, doctor. Do you drink or smoke? I'm a regular smoker, but drink very rarely. Where do you work? Actually, I do dynamite work and, in fact, putting in the dynamite in large holes for breaking ground for laying pipelines. I do frequent traveling for this work. Does anyone in your family have prostate cancer, kidney cancer, or any other illness? Nothing of such kind, doctor. Do you get fever? No, doctor. Are you positive for HIV or do you have any STDs? No, doctor. Have you had any surgery in the past? Yes, doctor. I had back surgery with fusion of L5-S1. What medications are you taking? I take Percocet occasionally for back discomfort. Are you allergic to any medicine? No, doctor. Well, your physical examination shows your blood pressure is 144.66 weight 177 pounds, your heartbeat rates and rhythm are regular, hmm. you have pedunculated lesion on the dorsum on your penis that is apparent, there is also another brown lesion mildly raised, your testicles are bilateral and descended without masses. I think you have developed genital warts called molluscum contagiosum caused by human papillomavirus. The etiology is unknown but it's most likely sexually transmitted. You have developed a viral infection that could have had a long incubation period. I suggest that from now on you have protected sexual intercourse to control the further transmission of the disease. Apply Condolox cream on the lesion for a period of one month. I suggest a CO2 laser therapy for the genital warts, which is just an outpatient procedure. However, there is a 20% chance of recurrence despite enucleating these lesions. Okay, doctor. I would like to go for a CO2 laser therapy. Extract 2. Questions 13 to 24. You hear a physician talking to a patient called Mrs. Gregorius. For questions 13 to 24, complete the following notes with a word or short phrase. You now have 30 seconds to look at the notes. Good morning, Mrs. Gregorius. Be seated. 
Tell me what your problem is. Good morning, doctor. I'm having severe abdominal pain and nausea after eating. What's your age? 38, doctor. I'm intolerant to fatty foods and my urine is dark colored. Do you get fever? Yes. I get chills and low-grade fever, nausea and a sharp stabbing pain in my abdomen. But when I lie down on my right side, I feel somewhat relieved. How long have you been suffering with these problems? For the past three months, doctor. Have you had any surgery before or any diseases? No, doctor. Are you taking any medications? No, doctor. Are you allergic to any medicine? No. Do you smoke or drink? I do smoke one pack a day, but I never drink. Do any of your family members have a history of any diseases? No, doctor. Tell me something about your family background. I am married and living with my husband and two children. Do you have any symptoms of seizures and ataxia? Yes, doctor, I have. Well, your MRI report is positive for cholelithiasis without CBD obstruction. Laboratory studies show that you have elevated bilirubin and elevated white blood cells. Your heart rate and rhythm is regular without any murmur or gallop. Bowel sounds are of a high pitch. Lower extremities are normal in color, touch and temperature. No ischemic changes are noted. Range of motion is normal. You have developed gallbladder disease. I would suggest laparoscopic cholecystectomy with intraoperative cholangiogram. Okay, doctor. This is the end of part A. Now look at part B. Part B. In this part of the test, you will hear six different extracts. In each extract, you will hear people talking in a different healthcare environment. For questions 25 to 30, choose the answer A, B, or C, which fits best according to what you hear. You will have time to read each question before you listen to the audio. Complete the answers as you listen to the audio. Now look at question 25. You hear a monologue by a physician explaining to his staff about Ballantidium coli. Now read the question. Ballantidium coli is an intestinal protozoan parasite that can infect human beings which are transmitted through the fecal-oral route by contaminated water and food. Although Ballantidium coli infection is mostly asymptomatic, patients with other severe illnesses can experience abdominal pain, persistent diarrhea, and sometimes a perforated colon. Ballantidium coli is a parasitic species of ciliate alveolates that causes the disease Ballantidiasis, which is the only member of the ciliate phylum known to be pathogenic to humans. Question 26. You hear a monologue by a physician explaining to his nurse about Hansen's disease. Now read the question. Hansen's disease is caused by slow-growing bacteria called Mycobacterium leprae that affects the nerves, eyes, skin, and nose lining called nasal mucosa. 
the disease can be cured with early diagnosis and treatment. Hansen's disease was once considered as a highly contagious and disastrous disease. However, today we know it doesn't spread easily and there are effective treatments. If left untreated, the nerve damage can result in crippling of feet and hands, blindness and paralysis. In very severe cases, the patient may have multiple injuries due to the lack of sensation and eventually the body may reabsorb the affected digits over time, resulting in the apparent loss of toes and fingers. When the disease affects the facial nerves, corneal ulcers and blindness can also occur. Other signs of severe Hansen's disease may include loss of eyebrows and saddle nose deformity, causing damage to the nasal septum. Question 27. You hear a physician discussing Japanese encephalitis and its risk factors. Now read the question. Hello, doctor. What is Japanese encephalitis and who is at a higher risk? Japanese encephalitis is a serious infection caused by the Japanese encephalitis virus that occurs mainly in rural parts of Asia. The disease is mainly spread through the bite of an infected mosquito, however, it does not spread from person to person. The residents where the disease is common or the people who travel frequently have the higher risk of this disease. Most of the patients do not develop any symptoms. Patients with Japanese encephalitis experience fever, neck stiffness, seizures, and coma. The disease has a mortality rate of 1 out of 4 patients. 50% of the patients have permanent disability. It can even harm the embryo of a pregnant woman. Question 28. You hear a physician talking about epilepsy and seizures. Now read the question. Doctor, what is epilepsy and what is a seizure? Epilepsy is a neurological or brain disorder which is also called a seizure disorder at times. Often the patient is diagnosed with epilepsy only when they have already had two or more seizures. A short change in normal brain activity is called a seizure which is the main sign of epilepsy. While certain seizures appear like starting spells, other seizures cause the patient to fall, shake, and become unaware of what's happening around them. Generally, a seizure lasts up to a few minutes depending on the type of seizure. Generalized seizures affect both sides of the brain, and focal seizures or partial seizures affect one side of the brain. Question 29. You hear a physician discussing about Lyme disease and its consequences. Now read the question. Hello doctor, what is Lyme disease and what are the consequences of it? Well, Lyme disease is caused by the bacterium Borrelia burgdorferi and is transmitted to humans with the bite of the infected black-legged ticks. Typical symptoms include headaches, fever, fatigue, and a characteristic skin rash called erythema migrans. Infection can spread to joints, the heart, and the nervous system if left untreated. Generally, Lyme disease is diagnosed by its symptoms and physical findings, such as the rash. Laboratory testing can be precise only if performed appropriately with validated methods. With a few weeks of antibiotics, the disease can be treated successfully. Question 30. You hear a physician explaining to his nurse about OMSC hemorrhagic fever. Now read the question.
What is Om's hemorrhagic fever, Doctor? A member of the Flavivirid virus family called Om's hemorrhagic fever virus causes this disease. The disease was initially detected between 1945 and 1947 in Omsk, Russia, from patients with hemorrhagic fever. The primary host of the disease is the rodents from the bite of an infected tick. Common tick vectors include Lexodes persulcatus, Dermacentrum marginatus, Dermacentrum reticulatus. Common rodents infected with the disease include the muskrat or the Andrada zebethica, water vole or arvicola terrestris, and narrow-skulled voles or microtus gregalis. However, muskrats are not native to the Omsk region, but were introduced to the region and now they have also become a common target for hunters and trappers. Muskrats become ill and die when infected with the virus. OHF occurs in the Novosibirsk, Western Siberia regions of Omsk, Tyumen, and Kurgan. This is the end of part B. Now look at part C. Part C. In this part of the test, you will hear two different extracts. In each extract, you will hear health professionals talking about specific aspects of their work. For questions 31 to 42, choose the answer, A, B, or C, which fit best according to what you hear. Complete the answers as you listen to the audio. Now, look at extract 1. Extract 1. Questions 31 to 36. You hear the doctor's lecture on coronary artery disease. You have 90 seconds to read the questions 31 to 36. Coronary artery disease, also called atherosclerotic heart disease, is caused by the accumulation of atheromatous plaques within the walls of the coronary arteries that supply oxygen and nutrients to the myocardium. The condition is also called coronary heart disease at times. Although coronary artery disease is the most common cause of coronary heart disease, 
it is not the only cause. Coronary artery disease is the primary cause of death worldwide. While the signs and symptoms of coronary artery disease are seen only during the advanced stage of the disease, most patients with coronary artery disease show no symptom or sign of the disease for decades as the disease keeps advancing before the first onset of symptoms of an acute myocardial infarction, a sudden heart attack, finally arises. After decades of development, some of these atheromatous plaques may rupture and along with the activation of the blood clotting system, begins to control the blood flow to the myocardium, causing sudden death. This disease is also the most common reason of death over 20 years of age. According to prevailing trends in the US, half of healthy 40-year-old males will develop coronary artery disease in the future and one in three healthy women of 40 years. The Guinness Book of Records show that Northern Ireland is the country with the most occurrences of coronary artery disease. Contrarily, the Maasai of Africa have almost no coronary artery disease. As the severity of coronary artery disease develops, there may be almost complete obstruction of the lumen of the coronary artery, totally restricting the flow of oxygen-carrying blood to the myocardium. Patients with advanced coronary artery disease typically have suffered from single or multiple myocardial infarctions and may have symptoms and signs of chronic coronary ischemia, including symptoms of flash pulmonary edema and angina at rest. A careful distinction should be made between myocardial infarction and myocardial ischemia. Ischemia means the amount of blood supplied to the tissue is insufficient to meet with the needs of the tissue. When the myocardium becomes ischemic, it does not perform optimally. When a maximum portion of the myocardium becomes ischemic, there can be difficulties in relaxation and contraction of the myocardium. Myocardial ischemia can be reversed if the blood supply to the tissue is improved. Infarction means the tissue has undergone irreversible death due to the lack of adequate oxygen-rich blood. A patient may develop a rupture of an atheromatous plaque at any stage of coronary artery disease. The acute rupture of the plaque may result in an acute myocardial infarction. Extract 2. Questions 37 to 42. You hear the doctor giving a lecture on different types of viruses and their impacts. You have 90 seconds to read questions 37 to 42.
Pox viruses are the oval-shaped or brick-shaped viruses having large double-stranded DNA genomes which exist worldwide, causing disease in humans and many other species. Typically, pox virus infections form lesions, disseminated rash, or skin nodules. In human beings, infection usually occurs due to the contact with infected animals, materials, or individuals. While certain types of pox viruses, such as variola virus or smallpox, no longer exist in nature, other pox viruses still exist and cause diseases to humans. These include ORF virus, monkey pox virus, molluscum contagiosum, etc. The genus Orthopox virus has a number of virus species that can infect humans and animals. The most renowned member of the genus Orthopox virus group is the variola virus, the causative vector of smallpox. Other popular members include the vaccinia virus that is used in the current smallpox vaccine, the cowpox virus that was introduced by Edward Jenner as the material of the first vaccine, and the monkeypox virus. Parapox viruses infect a variety of livestock animals, including goats, cattle, and sheep. Generally, human infection of parapox viruses is associated with an occupation involving cattle, goats, and sheep. Some of the renowned parapox viruses are bovine papular stomatitis virus, ORF virus, pseudocowpox virus, parapox virus of red deer, squirrel parapox virus. Molluscum contagiosum is the only member of the molluscipox virus genus. Molluscum contagiosum infects only human beings, and it is a common infection of children and immunodeficient patients. Yatta pox viruses infect both primates and humans across equatorial Africa. Species in this genus are named by the location where they were identified, Yaba of Lagos, Nigeria, and the Tana River Basin of Kenya. However, the natural host of Yatta pox viruses is unknown. Tanapox and Yaba monkey tumor virus are of Yada pox virus genus. Capripox viruses cause infection in goats, cattle, and sheep that can cause high morbidity and outbreaks of capripox viruses that can have a severe economic impact on farmers. The viruses of this genus are listed by the World Organizations for Animal Health as significant animal diseases that require serious concern. Sheeppox virus, goatpox virus, and lumpy skin disease viruses are of capripox virus genus. The swinepox virus is the only member of the sweepox virus genus, and swine are the only host for this virus. Members of the leprypox genus cause infections to squirrels, hares, and rabbits. In Australia, myxomavirus was used as a pest control in 1950 to eradicate feral European rabbits. Primarily, the transmission of leprypox virus occurs through mosquitoes, although other biting insects such as fleas can also transmit leprypox virus. The myxomavirus, virus, squirrel fibromavirus, hair fibromavirus are of leprypox virus genus. Avipox viruses cause infections to a number of wild and domestic birds that can be identified as causing disease in at least 232 species. Usually, the transmission occurs by inhalation, skin abrasions, or by biting insects like mosquitoes. That is the end of part C. You now have two minutes to check your answers.